what is up? It's what's on the, it's not what's on the shelf Wednesday. It's whiskey Wednesday, <laughs> but it is actually what's on the shelf Wednesday. I did do another, uh, did do an episode today. How you guys doing? Thanks for coming in uh, on this Wednesday night. I uh, hope you all are doing well, staying safe, doing what you can to uh, keep yourself occupied. Um, yeah, we're going to have a uh, fun show tonight. So glad everyone is tuning in. <clears throat> I got what could be a painful blind tasting going to be doing tonight. I'm not sure. Uh, the blind tasting was kicked off by uh, the announcement of the Weller uh, single barrel <laughs> in, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, so I did want to, uh, before we get into that, though, let me say hi to all of you in the chat. Uh, everyone coming over from uh, Bourbon Sane's awesome blind tasting. So let's see here. Rebecca Page was in early. Of course, Trev Wilson. Tom R. was here. He apparently wants pizza. I hope you got some, Tom. Uh, Barn Doors in the house. Truth Seeker, thanks for coming in, buddy. Wheels is here. How you doing, Brandon? Uh, Michael Kohler, nice to see you, man. He's he's uh, from right here in the backyard in uh, Seabus or Columbus. Seabus, as they call it. Uh, Karen B. Ford is here. Hey, DMCKY is here. What's up, man? Uh, Brett Marquette is here. Uh, Amber Dream, nice to see you. Uh, Bourbon Buddies, what's up, buddies? Steven Sussman's here. Uh, Trev Wilson, uh, saying, oh, he's saying hi to the buddies. Uh, let's see, Ben Demon Hunter's here. Steven Sussman, nice to see you. Any drink goes, what is up? Ryan Tarpey, Brian Brennicky, uh, nice to see you, Brian. Hope uh, you and Tammy are doing well. There, uh, Todd is in the house here. Uh, who else? Holy crap, a lot of people jumping in right now. Donald Rantz. Uh, the Whiskey Yoda, the Irish Whiskey Yoda from Canada. Nice to meet you, man. <laughs> nice to see you in here. Austin Hubbard's here. What is up? Austin, going to be tasting one of uh, some great samples that he just sent. So uh, stay tuned for that. Daryl uh, Messias or Micaias or Misha, uh I'm going to say Micaias. I think that's how you say that, Micaias. Um, hey, T Wizard, what's up? Nice to see you, man. As always, uh, let's see, Mark Ruff is here saying cheers, uh, Josernator88, Whiskey Ace is in the house, what is up guys, uh, hey, Bourbon Bites is here, that is Clifton McDaniel, loving the new channel, man, uh, Kevin Fisher, oh, the new rebranding, I should say, uh, Greg Lewis is here, uh, who else we got, 500 Pizzas, Chris Buzalencia, nice to see you, man, Jim Muller's here, and the list goes on. Nicholas Villaggio, Todd Sexton, Whiskey Padawan. Um, I think I saw... Oh, King Jacked, of course, is here. Brazo, Scott from My Bourbon Journey, Whiskey Explorer. Bunch of folks coming in. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. So, so what I wanted to do tonight, and uh, this all had to do with, uh, uh, with the announcement of the Weller Single Barrel. I was kind of just like, I don't know. I'm like, had enough with these damn Weller... Uh, the, the damn Weller releases and them talking about how oh, it's going to be released once a year and everyone's going to go nuts for it. I'm like, you know what? I want to do like the freaking cheapest bourbons that are available that I could find and do a blind tasting. So tonight I have seven, seven. At first it was six, but then I added another one at the last minute. Seven uh, bourbons. These aren't like second shelf up. These aren't, you know, the, that second shelf. This is bottom, bottom shelf. So uh, tonight we're going to be have a blind tasting. I'll go through the bottles, what's going to be in this. Uh, they're all sitting right here. But it should be an interesting blind tasting. I don't know if it's going to be painful or if it's going to be, we might maybe have find a, a good surprise in there. We'll see. Hey, Whiskey Crusaders in the house. We got Richie Z. Uh, Sam Patton is here. Eric Evanson, what is up, man? Uh, Karen B. Ford, I don't know if I said hi to you. Nice to see you as always. Mashfield number one for the world. He wrote seven. Steve A says, agreed. How about getting SR and 107 rally available everywhere? Then start with the special releases. Ah, that would, that would make sense. <laughs> uh, only seven? Why not make it eight? Uh, I don't have an eighth, man. Uh, I went with seven because most of these are 80 proof. So I don't think I'll be feeling it. Now, if this was like seven Eliza Craig barrel proofs, I might, you know, fall over again. Uh, I wanted to share some really cool, uh, bottles I got recently. Um, I'll ask you guys if you want me to do any quick reviews of this one tonight. I'm willing to open a couple of these, do a quick review for you guys. Um, so, uh, but before that, 
uh, anyone that super chats tonight, and Trev Wilson will be uh, will be keeping track of the names as always. Hey, Whiskey Brazil's in the house, and Troke thirty five. Nice to see you guys. Um, uh, anyone who super chats tonight will have a chance to win a bottle of Woodenville. Um, I got an, I was able to get an extra one. Uh, a buddy of mine brought me because they sold out pretty fast in Ohio. Uh, so was able to get another one. I have enough Woodenville, so I figured anyone that can't get Woodenville and wants to try the recent Bourbon of the Year award winner uh, will have a chance to win a uh, a Woodenville tonight. So that is up for grabs. Um, all right, so a couple of cool bottles I got. Hey, Alan is in the house. What is up? Joseph Brazo says, I went to work today. That's awesome, man. Congrats. Cheers to that. Yeah, screw that. Let's uh, first everyone have a drink. Here's everyone staying safe. If, you're, if your city is, uh, is open and back up, wherever you live, um, you know, still be safe out there. You know, stay, uh, you know, stay clean, wash the hands, do all the good stuff. Let's keep this on the downturn here. Uh, so cheers to that. Cheers to going back to work. Cheers to maybe going back to a restaurant here and there. Uh, everyone stay safe. This is uh, an Eagle Rare store pick I'm starting with tonight. So cheers, guys. Woo! That was yummy. Uh, all right, we got Joseph. Oh, we also got Brian Robertson with a $5 super chat. Cheers to Brian. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate that. Uh, T Wizard, there's a super chat, uh, is in the chat. So below in the chat um, area, there's a little dollar bill sign. It's almost like kind of sending just some support for the channel. Uh, hey, Steven Sussman. Hey, I know it's been a while. Cheers, bud. Thank you so much. Uh, Josernator88, thank you so much for the super chat. Nice to see you, Steven. It has been a while, but I've seen, I've been seeing you, uh, you know, kind of jumping into the different um, live streams here and there. So thanks for coming up. Old Toad is here. Let's open up the country and a bottle of Woodenville. Hell yeah, Old Toad. I like that. Um, so today I was able to grab the Ardbeg Wee Beastie. So this is the uh, the five year uh, Wee Beastie from Ardbeg, the new one. So I was able to grab that today. So I could do a quick review on that if you guys want. Um, Jeffrey Wack with a four ninety nine super chat. He says, "Went to buy an Evan Williams bottled and bond today. Found an ECBP B five twenty in the wild to go along with it. Holy crap, Jeffrey! You got to let us know how that B five twenty is. I'm still waiting to get mine here. Uh, hey, cheers, Michael Carr. Thanks for coming in. Very very cool of you. Um, also got a Stag Junior uh, batch thirteen. This is finally my own bottle I was able to get. Uh, so I have that." I did have a, a bottle that I borrowed um, when I did my battle, my uh, stag night, um, but this is my own bottle, so I'm happy I got that. Um, one that I've been maybe thinking about getting, but I haven't, I think I've only had this once in my life. This is the old Taylor, but the straight rye. Uh, so this is the Colonel Taylor rye whiskey that I recently got. So I thought that was kind of... Um, uh, I got to thank my mom if she's watching for getting this for me because she was able to find it. <laughs> uh, hey, Bourbon Bites, Clifton McDaniel. I think this is my first super chat I've sent here. Here's to many more. I'll have the Wee Beastie tomorrow for my review. Oh, very nice. Everyone, please go check out Clifton McDaniel at Bourbon Bites. Uh, he just rebranded his channel. He's doing like a combo of video games and whiskey. It's awesome. Definitely go check it out. Greg Lewis, because uh, I'm in on that free whiskey, my favorite kind. Of course, Greg. Cheers to you, man. Thanks for that. I appreciate it. Um, and last but not least, the, the unicorn of unicorns. Uh, hey, Zeb Taylor just came in with a $10 super chat. Cheers, Jason. Here's to your whiskey knowledge. Very much appreciated. Chris Brusilentia, thanks for the chance at the Woodenville. $5.01. Thank you, Chris. Uh, I finally got myself a President's Choice. Um, this is Batch 9. Uh, and the best part is it is signed by, um, well, can you see that? Where's the light? There it is. It is signed. Uh, hold on. There you go. Um, signed by Campbell Brown, president of, uh, of Brown Foreman. 
So I was so psyched to get this. Uh, I don't know if Howdy Whiskey is in the chat, but he helped me acquire this bottle. So thank you so much. Um, I cannot wait to, maybe I'll crack this open tonight. I just passed uh, 14,000 subscribers yesterday, which was also an awesome milestone. So thank you for all the support out there. Uh, yeah, and we'll be doing that. So Barrel Lover, thanks for the thoughts on working up to higher proof. Oh, my pleasure, Barrel Lover. Bourbon saying straight rye is very average, unfortunately, but very hard to find. Okay. I might crack that open and try it. Zeb Taylor just picked up an E.H. Taylor rye myself. Haven't opened it yet. All right. Maybe I'll crack that one open and give it a, you know, give it a go here. Um, hey, Oak and Smoke Whiskey Reviews is in the house. What is up, Brent? Nice to see you, man. Um, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is a serious... That is a serious find, buddy. Here's the fort. Yeah, thank you so much. William Edwards, thank you so much. File Super Chat. 499 Holy Unicorns, one of the whiskeys I want to try before I die. Andrew Buchanan. Yeah, it's uh, that's one that I've been searching for for a while. So I've only had one pour of it at a, at a store that you could pay to. I was in Kentucky. There was a store that you could pay to try a bunch of different you know, high-end bourbons like Pappies and um, birthday bourbons. And that was one of them. I got to try it and I was like, holy crap, I, I got to find a bottle of this. But they're so rare. They're so hard to get. Um. <laughs> All right, guys. So real quick, I want to uh, say thank you to my Patreons. I got some new ones uh, recently. So Jennifer Hanna, a guy that goes by the name of Simply Mike. Thank you so much, uh, David Charles Punk, uh, David Charles Bunker, um, Ethan Turk. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jacob Tibbs as well. Thank you for uh, becoming uh, some drummers. Uh, I have uh, s some new legendary drummers, um, and I also added a new tier called Epic Drummer. So um, you could st you could support the channel. It's a little three dollars a month. Uh, I got some really cool stuff going on the channel: glasses, flask, which brings me to an update for my new swag coming out. I know you guys were asking about my hats made out of barrel wood with the logo. Um, the company, Columbus Barrel Company that I work with has gotten back up to working. So they're gonna be producing a bunch of hats for me which will be able to, uh, which be able to, uh, be able to order uh, coming up very soon. Also some, uh, some brand new flasks uh, out of the barrel wood as well. And, um, and shirts I'm still waiting on unfortunately. Uh, the company that I'm working with that isn't back to work yet. So those are still on hold. But hats and flasks and coasters are coming very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that, guys. Uh, Joseph Enrique says, I'm in. Awesome, man. Thanks you so much. Uh, Andrew Buchanan. Oh, I already saw yours. I'm sorry. Yeah, Jacob Enriquez. Thank you so much, man. Uh, all right. So let's get into some whiskey news. Because there was, a, there was an interesting bottle that I saw, some news that came up uh, on the, uh, the newswire here uh, this week. Or actually just today, I believe. So uh, let's get up into the whiskey news real quick. Uh, so first up is Whistlepig. Uh, they announced their new home stock, which is different from their farm stock. Uh, Whistlepig, this is made from a blend of rye, uh, wheat, and barley whiskeys. This whiskey is the fourth in the brand's farm stock series, which used some of the Whistle Pig's own rye distillate. But for this release, Flaviar members and industry professionals were sent blending kits at home to decide on the final blend. So the crowdsourced blend is a 45% four-year-old rye, 30% five-year-old wheat whiskey, 25% five-year-old barley whiskey, and it's bottled at 43% with an MSRP of $72.99. So... Um, so I don't know some of the channels if you guys saw, I know it's bourbon night. Um, trying to think of who else I saw that got one. I think uh, whiskey tribe. I think they got a couple of the blending kits and I think based on that feedback, this is what they're going to be coming out with, which is pretty cool. Uh, let me go back and see if what I missed here. Mark Royland. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Joe Edwards says, love the channel. Let's drink some good bourbon. Hell yeah, man. Hey, Vito Castrate is here. Best bottom shelf bourbon is JTS Brown. Um, yeah, well, the JTS Brown um, bottle and bond I love. Um, the regular one, I would have to try, but I think these are, the, the regular JTS Brown I think is really good, but I think the bottle and bond is way better. 
Uh, so we'll see how these do. I'll show you what's going to... Uh, oh, Hank Butts is here. The giveaway is a bottle of Woodenville. Bourbon of the year. <laughs> uh, all right, next up is this one, Port Charlotte. So this is Brook Lottie releases the new Port Charlotte cask exploration bottling. This is the OLC 01-2010. Um, this is distilled in 2010 with 100% Scottish malted barley. Um, now this is the breakdown for the mix of casks it went through. Uh, first fill X bourbon, second fill X bourbon, second fill X Syrah wine, 25% Vindu Naturel, which is a French fortified wine. Um, in 2018, the whiskey was placed into Oloroso Sherry Hogsheads uh, from Fernando de Castilla to finish maturation. It's bottled without chill filtration, 55.1% ABV, MSRP of $110. So, again, that's going to... I love the Brook Lottie stuff. If I see that, I'll probably get one, but the, the special releases don't come through Ohio too often, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so coming up here, also let's go to, nope, you saw that one, this one. So we have a couple of quick, uh, quick hitters here. Uh, Elijah Craig toasted barrel bourbon. So now the first time I heard that I heard about this was actually from Chris Bourbon Sane posted it on Facebook, I believe. Now it's unclear whether this will be a limited edition or a new permanent edition to the Heaven Hill lineup, but this appears to be a non H statement release. It's a 94 proof, a toasted barrel, Elijah Craig. I'm a huge fan of toasted barrel bourbons. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, kind of pans out. Um, Balcones Lineage, Texas Single Malt, a new release from the esteemed Waco, Texas. Uh, seems to pay homage to traditional single malts while also keeping true to what defines the brand as a Texas whiskey. Uh, this is aged for a minimum of 36 months and bottled at 47% ABV. Uh, then we have Johnny Walker Blue Legendary 8. Um, this is to celebrate the 200th anniversary for Johnny Walker. Eight distilleries are featured with each having been around when the Johnny Walker brand was established. It's just, you know, it's just basically a, a rebranding of the bottle. You know, nothing crazy. Um, also, Woodford Reserve is uh, launching a new master dis uh, Master's Collection, Very Fine and Rare, number 16. Um, the number 16 is not an age statement. However, this is going to be bottled at the standard 45.2% ABV. So not sure, not sure what too much of the details yet on what that Woodford Reserve Masters collection is going to be. Um, so that should be interesting. Um, and lastly, this is the story that came through today. Uh, and this is about Peyton Manning. I don't know if you guys caught this. Um, so early 2019, uh, Peyton Manning and tennis great Andy Roddick and Jim Nance joined a small ownership group that purchased Sweeten's Cove Golf Club. Um, it's just outside of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, it's developed kind of a cult following, uh, and it's only costs about $25 uh, to, to get in. It's a nine-hole track on Golf Week's top 100 course rankings. Now, so those guys decided to acquire a bunch of uh, bourbons or a bunch of barrels for a 13 year old Tennessee bourbon. And they hired, um, uh, ex master distiller over at, uh, ex master distiller over at Castle and key, Marianne Eves to blend them and create something unique. So that's going to be, so only 14,000 bottles of Sweetens Cove bourbon will be available to Tennessee residents starting May 26th via presale. Um, by June, the $200 bottle is expected to surface in Georgia and other markets. Um, this person who wrote this article said, I've already tried it, found it quite good with a rich peanutty aroma and mature flavor profile, not unexpectedly heavy on the oak. It's 102.18 proof, and it's definitely a bourbon meant for connoisseurs, not just Peyton fanboys. All right. Interesting. So you think from Tennessee, 13 years old, I mean, if it's Dickel, eh, I don't know if I want to pay 200 bucks for a 13 year old Dickel. So uh, I think I missed some super chats. Let me go back in here. want to say thanks to, um, <clears throat> Jimmy Munt. Thanks so much. 
Thanks for uh, jumping in, man. Ben Legare, twenty dollars super chat. Thank you so much. A little help from the Broken Bottle Fund. Yeah, I'm still kind of still trying to acquire another Ardbeg Black, man. Uh, Hank Butts, four ninety nine. Rock on as I move the slide. Uh, stays on the ninety nine. Anyway, to do an event mount, I'm new. Oh, okay. Welcome in, Hank Butts. Glad to see you're here, man. Of course. Irish FF one eight seven. Thank you so much. And Mark Royland, fourteen dollars super chat. Oh, thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. Nicholas Velaja, $200 for Dickel, Bottled, and Bond. I mean, I guess. Whiskey Crusader says, pass. Peyton probably eats all the Flintstones vitamins. <laughs> hey, what is up? Hot buttery rolls. What is up, man? Nice to see you, buddy. Um, how old is that Dickel, Bottled, and Yeah, the Dickel, Bottled, and Bond is 13. So, I mean, I, I don't know. It's... When I saw that, I was like, so would it just be another Dickel Bottle and Bond? But it's a bunch of different barrels that are blended. Uh, I don't know. Could it be Jack Daniels whiskey? I don't know. I'm going to be digging more on that to see where the hell this bourbon's coming from. Um, Doug Krisoff, I'll be sipping some of these along with you. Nice. All right, so before I get to the blind tasting and kill my palate here, um, I do want to do a quick comparison with you guys. Um, so let me see here. So I was able to get a, um, uh, an Eliza Craig 18, uh, an old one. So if you saw my review, I wasn't too crazy about Eliza Craig 18, you know, the, the regular one, uh, when I did my review, I thought it was underproofed. I didn't think it was too interesting, um, and so one of the viewers here, Austin Hubbard, who's in the chat room was kind enough to send me one of the old bottles before it went to, uh, this bottle design. So I thought it'd be fun to do a quick comparison and see if the old Elijah Craig 18 is better than this one, which a lot of people say. So I'm going to do a quick comparison. And while I'm doing this, you guys can, um, I guess vote on what whiskey you want me to open next to do a quick review here. Um, you could do the Wee Beastie uh, or the the Wee Beastie or the Colonel Taylor Rye. Oh, that's the same one. All right, let's go with the Elijah Craig 18. So this is the old one. Brought to you by Austin Hubbard. Thank you so much, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, John Gretchen said, where is your shirt from? Um, this is from actually, uh, Nelson Greenbrier Distillery in, uh, in Tennessee, actually. The, uh, the guys that bring you Bell Mead, Bell Mead bourbon. So I went to the distillery and got this shirt. Although I think Whiskey Dick, I think Bill also has a shirt designed like this as well. Uh, Antroke35, thanks so much. He says, love all the info. Appreciate that, man. That's what I'm here for. Uh, Z-Man says, great stream, Jason. Appreciate it. Uh, thanks for the super chat, guys. You are all entered. We have Wee Beastie, E-H-T Rye, Wee Beastie, Wee Beastie, Taylor Rye, Taylor Rye. It's, like, it's kind of even right now. Um, all right. 227 in the chat. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember to hit that like button. Really appreciate it. Wow. The, um, the old Elijah Craig 18. The nose on that is way more interesting way more interesting. I mean, this one you get kind of the, the dry oak, you get a little bit of spice there, but the older one, man, this one is way rich, way more rich on the, on the nose here. Man, this one's almost a little bit of chocolate, de definitely some dark brown sugars. I love the, uh, the oak coming through on this one too. Very, very sweet oak. Not that bitter oak that you sometimes get with an Elijah Craig with an older one. Eric Evans says, I think the Beastie would be better after blowing your palate on all those bourbons. <laughs> Man, let's go for a sip of the old one. Here we go. Mmm. I mean, that, that sip was really, ooh, got a nice little chocolate cherry note back on the, on the back end there. Chocolate cherry, vanilla. 
Shit, that's good. Way better than I remember this one being. Z-Man, thank you so much again. AJ Lopez, stuck at work, but I wanted to say cheers, Jason C. And peace, uh, hot buttery rolls. What is up, man? Robot Scott, can we get a review on Jeff the Creed? <laughs> Listen, if I get my hands on like a batch two or three or four down the line, I'm going to get it and I'm going to review it. And I hope it got better. Because if it didn't, I'm going to say so. So the old, so the newer Elijah Craig 18 is just a little bit lighter. It's not as, um, it's not as punchy on the nose. Let's go for a sip of this one. Wow, the difference is incredible. This one is just so much flatter than this. It's night and day. Austin Hubbard, you were right. You were correct. This, this, the older bottle, the Elijah Craig 18, way more punchy in flavor. Way more, um, God, the flavors in there. You're, you're getting that Elijah Craig 18, that, that oak, that, that Elijah Craig oak, uh, that oak finish. But the sweeter notes are hanging on enough to balance it out. Whereas in this one, the more you sip it, the sweet notes go away and the oak just kind of takes over. Doesn't really make for a great sipping experience. Again, these are single barrels. Maybe there's some better barrels out there than this one was. Uh, for any of you that want to know which barrel it is, it's this one. It is 4932. Um, decent on the first couple sips, but then it just goes real flat. Let's go over another sip of this 18-year-old here. <laughs> Strike 4 in Elijah Craig 18 reviews. Yeah, it's, yeah, this one is just, eh, it's just flat. Uh, I kept hearing that and hearing that about this bottle, and then I got an opportunity to get one in MSRP, and I, I had been dodging it, so I figured, you know what, let me let me go in and try to get one here. Hey, Douglas Snell comes in with the file Super Chat. He says, how's it going? Going great, man. We're drinking whiskey, hanging out. It's an awesome night. Thanks for coming in, everybody. Whiskey Wednesday. Um, all right. Elijah Craig 18, older is better. If you find an older one and you want a better Elijah Craig 18 experience, then the older bottle is definitely the way to go. Have a good night, Alan, whiskey friend. I was on live with uh, Alan, the whiskey friend uh, earlier today, and he ended up having a marathon of a, uh, of a live stream. So that was awesome, man. <laughs> All right, so we have the Wee Beastie and the Colonel Taylor Rye. You know what? I don't think I'm going to do... Uh, hey, Mark Royal and hey, Jason, congrats on 14K. Have you gone back to the Booker's Granny's Batch since you reviewed it? I just bought a bottle. Um, I did, actually. Somebody on my Patreon asked me to go back to it uh, to, to check it out because they said that it's opening up better. So I went back to it, and it did get a little better. It's, it's opening up, getting sweeter. I still don't think it's $90 good, though. For 90 bucks, every Booker's release to me needs to be as good as Country Ham was. And it's got, you know, Granny's Batch has a typical, you know, peanut butter Booker's profile. But Country Ham had so much more. Even Beaten Biscuits had a little bit more depth of flavor than the Granny. Granny's Batch is just like a solid, good Booker's bourbon. It's not exceptional. It's not bad either. Kind of falls somewhere in the middle. It's a decent batch. But listen, you're going to make people pay $90. That shit needs to be off the chain. That's my opinion. I feel like the Knob Creek single barrels are starting are going to start taking over the Bookers a little bit because they're so damn good. And they're half the price and they're older. So, um, Hey, DH Silva's in the house. What's up, man? All right. Uh, let's go to... Ah, let's open the rye. I'm opening the rye because my mother's watching and she got this for me. <laughs> uh, Spencer Mav, Pete would probably kill any possible notes. Yeah, I'm going to wait. We'll see how I feel at the end after I do the blind tasting. Uh, if my palate's not pretty shot, then I'll, I'll, do the, I'll do a quick review of the Wee Beastie. But here's the Colonel Taylor rye. So again, one of those, one of those uh, E.H. Taylors I don't see very often. 
Uh, my mom grabbed this at uh, one of the stores that I uh, deal with in uh, in New York. So uh, she was able to send this out. So I wish I had my knife. <clears throat> Ah, oh, Jesus, man. Come on. There we go. Man, Colonel Taylor really doesn't want you to get in this bottle. Shit. All right. Progress. Jesus Lord. All right, let's get a nice pour here. I like to uh, pre-tear the tax stamp because I like to get a clean break because I'm, I'm a nerd like that. All right, Colonel Taylor Rye. Uh, Bourbon Bite says, one of my favorite ryes. Okay, I think I've only ever had this once and I don't remember it being that memorable. So I'll probably do a full review on this one. Because I haven't, you know, haven't gotten a chance. I need to get it down past here, as you guys know. I like to sip it a little bit further before I review it. Get some air in it. See how it actually is, not off the neck pour. Um, wow, so I definitely get some dill and a little bit of licorice on the nose here for this one. Which is surprising for a Kentucky rye. Usually... Usually, I'm mean, like I used to. I'm used to getting those, like in you know, with Willet, some of the Willet products. But I didn't expect that. For, I expected this to be a little bit more of a sweeter rye. Maybe it is on the palate, but I'm getting dill, a little bit of caramel there too. But dill, slight black licorice note, not terribly off-putting. I kind of hate black licorice, but it's not too bad in this rye. Hey, Chad Wallace is in the house. What's up, Emily Chambers? Nice to see you. Please let me know how the EH Rye compares to Whistlepig 10. Oh, that's a good that's a good question actually. So far, I like this on the nose a little bit better than Whistlepig 10. But let's go for a sip. Cheers, guys. Yeah, much sweeter on the palate than I thought it would come through on the nose. Now the Kentucky rye is coming through. It's definitely um, um, getting some chocolate, some mint on the back end. It's very minty, kind of, kind of bursting on the back of the palate here. You get the caramel. You can tell this is not a high rye mash bill, at least I don't think. It's got like a, what is that? It's like, um, what do you call it? Like star anise, like, um, which can give you like a, like a licorice type flavor, but it's not like licorice candy. It's more like that star anise flavor or like fennel. I'm getting like fresh fennel on the palate. That's really interesting. I did not expect that from this at all. There's almost like a grape soda note that I'm getting too. Or is it like root beer? That's one of the most, that's one of the weirdest rye whiskeys I've had. <laughs> I'm not sure how to feel about that. Yeah, there's like a, it's like a root beer note I'm getting in here, like sassafras. A um, little bit of almond in there. Definitely some mint, still getting the mint on the back end. Little, uh, Definitely some black pepper hanging around too. I like the finish on it. Again, it's 100 proof. Nice proof point. I kind of like it. Um, let's see. We got... Cool running. Cheers to your mom. <laughs> Thanks, man. 
Um, Keith Schmidt says, E.H. Taylor Rye tastes much better further down in the bottle. That's what I'm, I'm getting a good amount of flavor here. It's just, it's a kind of an unusual rye for me. Uh, Patrick Fulmer, my mom never gets me whiskey. <laughs> Sorry, Patrick. Um, Bourbon Bite says, I'm good, I'm a sucker for a good honey finish. I definitely can see some honey there, but. Whoa, 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 I gotta catch up here. Um, Bourbon saying, just think about how much you love Pikesville when you drink this. I'm not a black licorice guy, too. Part of the reason I'm not a fan. I could see that. There is definitely a star anise, black licorice, root beer type vibe going on. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of honey as well. Kind of mint and pepper on the back end. I'm definitely going to see how this opens up. So I'm looking forward to it. So far, I kinda, I'm kind of, i kind of leaning that I kind of like this. I would probably reach for Pikesville probably first. But this is way better than I thought it would be. Um, Nick Foles, who would you guess Kentucky Owl sourced the 11-year rye whiskey from for batch two? Uh, hmm. I don't know, man. For the rye? Uh, I don't know. I would have to think about that. I would have to revisit it because I haven't had that in a long time. I'm trying to remember. I think, I think somebody had told me where they might have gotten it. I'm trying to remember where the hell it was. I don't know if it was if it was Canadian rye or if it was um, maybe some Willet. Not sure. Uh, Luke W. Swig of bottom shelf bourbon for the working man. Enough of the fancy pants whiskey. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Fun theme for the stream. Yeah, thank you so much, man. That's awesome. Uh, Meredith McCurry, great content as always. Thank you, Meredith. Thanks for coming in. We got 275 in the chat. That might be a personal record for me. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Appreciate that. Um, I was not stoked on the Whistlepick 10, but alas, I have not traversed too far into Ryland. Um, I like this over the standard Whistlepick 10, I think, but I like the Whistlepick 10. The picks are phenomenal. Those I probably like better than this. So the Whistlepick 10 picks are usually really good because they're usually cast strength. Um, they have some unique finishes to them sometimes. Really good stuff. Um, root beer or, or sarsaparilla? I think it's closer to sarsaparilla, Emily. That's what I'm thinking it's kind of leaning towards. Uh, so again, guys, any super chat tonight? Hey, Michael Carr says, I got to sign off. Please pick me for that free bottle. Cheers to all. Will do, Michael. Thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. Remember, anyone who super chats tonight uh, gets entered into a drawing for a free bottle of Woodenville bourbon. Uh, again, bourbon of the year uh, that it just won. Um... Woodenville has some of the best, you know, some of the best craft whiskey coming out of Washington. It's so good. So for those of you, so I, I hope whoever wins this is might be in a location that can't get this quite yet. So that might be, might be cool, but we'll see who wins. Uh, Derek Harmon, do you have any experience with whiskey aroma kits? Yes, I do actually, Derek. Um, uh, so one from... The Staven Thief is probably the best one. It's pricey, but it's, I mean, it comes with everything you need. It's pretty incredible. Um, also, I am not a, if you go back to my, I have a video that I did, uh, how to enhance your bourbon palette. If you watch that video and go down in the bottom of the about section of that video, I actually break down what you need to get to make your own. Um, I have my own kit that I've made, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do that in a live stream next time. I'll kind of go through my tasting, uh, my aroma kit that I've made, um, which includes, you know, vanilla, oak chips, um, some, uh, uh what else is in there? Like dry cherries, just stuff to start picking apart different scents. Um, obviously, uh, herbs and spices are in there too. Black pepper, white pepper, um, uh, but yeah, but there's, there's a couple that are out there. The Staven Thief one though is probably the... It's like the Cadillac of, uh, of aroma kits. It's pretty nice. Um, King Jack comes in. Jason, always happy to support your channel, brother. And thank you for not putting JD on your bottom shelf. <laughs> Jack Daniels. No, man, I like Jack Daniels. I don't mind Jack Daniels. All right, guys. Let's get into this tasting. Um, let me get this out of the way. So before we dive in, let's meet the contenders tonight. Uh, oh, before we do that, Jason Busey, E.H. Taylor Rye is one of the best ryes I've ever had. Not super hot. Great woody vanilla notes for me. Yeah, I could see that, Jason. 
I'm actually really liking the balance of like that root beer, sarsaparilla, vanilla type of sweetness to it. A little bit of mint on the back end. I like the proof point. I'm kind of liking it. We'll see how it opens up. So I have seven, seven bottom shelfers. Now, again, this is why I did it because I was so sick of all the damn Weller. Uh, I got like sick of the damn Weller single barrel thing. I went into the store. I'm like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to freaking pick up some awesome bottom shelfers and put them in a blind taste test and see if there's some really good ones out there that, you know, people could get for like 10, 12 bucks and they're just sitting on the shelf. So, uh, T Wizard, hey, thank you so much. See you at Kroger. I'll share it with Steve. <laughs> Uh, yes, I always see, uh, that's Tom Wizard. Uh, thanks so much for uh, coming in, man. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope your family and, and you are staying safe, buddy. Hope to see you in Kroger soon. Uh, cool Running, that would be a great aroma stream. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. That's a good, uh, that's a, that's a good idea. Ro Ron's Wood Turning Shop says, bottom shelf is still worth buying. Hell yeah, man. All right, so here are the contenders. We have Old Crow. Uh, from the Old Crow Distillery, we have Bourbon Supreme. Yes. From Luxco. <laughs> Ancient Age. From Buffalo Trace, as you guys may know. Uh, we have Benchmark, which is also from Buffalo Trace. Uh, we have the Heaven Hill, uh, actually just, yeah, the Heaven Hill Quality House, just the white label. This is not the Bottle and Bond. This is just the 80 Proof White Label. Um, the one that I'm probably most scared of, uh, 10 High, <laughs> which is a Sazerac product. So 10 High, Bourbon, and Ezra Brooks. Ezra Brooks Bourbon Whiskey. So these are the seven that are in line tonight to see which it comes out as the best bottom shelfer. So I have everything poured. Uh, I have everything um, labeled. I have the key behind me so I can't. I don't know what's in what. So here we go, guys. So I'm going to uncover the glasses here. Whoa. Uh, David Hatton, thanks for the bottom shelf blind tonight. Hey, man. Uh, it's the least I could do. I think it's time we drink some affordable and findable uh, bourbons. <laughs> All right, here we go, guys. So I don't think seven will be too bad. I did a 16 bottled and bond live tournament one night, so that was fun. If I can man, if I can make it through that, I think I can handle this. So let's mix these up a little bit. I have no idea what's in each glass. I mean, I all I can say is these bourbons are really light. <laughs> Not a lot of age on these bourbons at all. So uh, this is. <laughs> let's see, no Jim Beam. So. Yeah, I was going to grab Jim Beam White Label, but Jim Beam White Label, at least here, is on the second shelf up. It's not on the bottom. So everything I wanted to make sure that I got tonight was on the very bottom shelf. So Jim Beam White Label is on the second shelf up here. So everything I grabbed was uh, all on the very, very, very bottom shelf. Uh, there were a couple of other weird ones that I didn't get that I was going to maybe get, but I said, no, you know, maybe not. Um, all right, got that, got that. All right, so here are my seven. Um, let's see. So Eric Evanson says, predicting ancient age to win. Joseph Brazo, they all need to be mixed with Sprite. <laughs> Probably. Jason, looks like you have got a great white wine lineup tonight. Yeah, seriously, it looks like white wine, man. All right, I'm going to work this way. Uh, so it looks that way on your screen. So here we go. Let's go first, first sip here. As I would, as I would uh, expect, extremely grainy. Very, very light vanilla. Very corn forward. I think the the bourbon that might like you know separate itself tonight might be the one that's actually comes through as you know a little bit more than just corn, but this one I'm getting a lot of corn. DMC KY says, Ancient Age 90 Tasty Buffalo Trace Mash Bill, number two. Yep. Ben Sacro says, I predict Coke and Sprite for the win. <laughs> hey, how do you whiskey? What's up, man? How you doing? Nice to see you, Dan. 
All right. Not much going on in this nose. Let's go for a sip of this one. Let's see how this, this palette is. A little scared of this one. Yeah. That was very vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. Very, very light on the palette, obviously. A lot of these are 80 proof. I think they're all 80 proof. 10 high is 80. Bourbon Supreme is 80. Ancient Age is 80. Old Crow is 80. Uh, Benchmark is 80. Ezra Brooks is 90. That one might stand out. And the Quality House Heaven Hill is also 80. So the only one, the only 90 proof in here is Ezra Brooks. That one's not bad. I was expecting a very grainy palette. You know, very youthful, maybe a little bit punchy in the alcohol, not a lot of uh, depth to it, but that one's like all vanilla ice cream. This one, like you could mix with like a good iced tea, like on a hot day, like iced tea in this one, whatever it is. It's got a lot of good vanilla notes. It's got kind of a lingering finish here. Oh, let me get my water. Ugh. I don't know if I'm gonna. I don't. I don't know if I'm gonna even try to try to even guess what these are. I haven't really had most of these. Um, Ancient Age I've had, but I don't remember. Benchmark I've had. I've reviewed that one. Uh, the Heaven Hill. That particular one I haven't had. Bourbon Supreme I've definitely never had, and Ten High I've definitely never had. Old Crow I think I've had. And Ezra Brooks I've had. So let's go to the second one here. Oh, this one smells like banana. Little banana note on this one. Interesting. Banana cream. A little bit of like a pie crust going on. Little black pepper. Oak, but very, very faint. Yeah, I mean, the difference here is that banana note that's in this one. Let's go for a sip of this one. Here we go. That was okay. I'm not hating on that one. I'm, I'm surprised at the banana note in that one, actually. It's a very heavy banana. Um, Trev Wilson. Uh, oh, thanks, yeah, for dropping that. Thank you so much, man. Um, Taste and Sensibility says, I've got a pour of Ancient Age. Oh, nice. Thanks for Joe, uh, coming in. Tim, uh, <laughs> thanks for joining in with the Ancient Age. Yeah. Um, that banana one is interesting. Tim Garge, solo cup for the win. Absolutely. You got to have, you got to have a tasting with a solo cup. This one is, is, is a little bit richer in flavor on the palate, but I think I might like the first one, but I just love that vanilla ice cream note that it has. Mmm, it's good stuff. So far, the first two aren't terrible. I'm not hating on it. The, this second one could come off as like maybe like a really cheap like Brown Foreman product because it's got that banana note to it. Um, there's no Jack Daniel, so I know it's not coming from that. Uh, Bourbon St. Jason is making me grab my benchmark, I guess. <laughs> uh, D8 Sill, so I missed what you poured, but is the color off? Or are you drinking light colored scotches? <laughs> no, I'm drinking really, uh, really cheap bourbons. So I grabbed a bunch of bourbons on the bottom shelf. We're doing a seven glass tasting here, so. Ryan Hill comes in with a super chat, says, I am spoiled. My, di my dad buys high dollar stuff and I get to drink it, enjoying your blind tasting. Cheers to that, Ryan. Hey, if you can get some high, high, uh, high price stuff like we all like to go chase after, nothing wrong with that. But, you know, every now and then it's, it's, it's good to check out the bottom shelf and, and humble you a little bit. Because then you, you know, for those of you that are chasing all the unicorns, it's like, hey, there's some good stuff right there. 
And obviously, you don't have to go to the bottom shelf. There's plenty of good stuff just sitting on the shelf that's available anyway. You know, like Russell's Reserve and Old Forester, 1920, stuff like that. Elijah Craig, obviously great bourbons. But, um, you know, all of these that I, I don't think there was one that was over $12 in this whole lineup. So, and these, these little bottles I got were like four bucks. So, crazy, right? All right, let's go to the third one. Yeah, this one smells a little sour on the nose, like sour lemon. That's probably the worst nose I've had so far out of the three. Definitely like corn, like, I don't know. It's almost like corn that has gone bad a little bit. <laughs> T8 Sill. I'm too old for the bottom shelf. I might throw out my back bending over. <laughs> Yeah, based on your collection, dude, you're just, you just got to reach up. All right, let's go for a sip of this one. Oh, that one was better on the palate. Um, number two and number three are very similar. Um, this one has a little bit of a sour lemon thing going on, while the second one uh, has more of the banana note. I kind of like the banana cream a little bit more. And the first one, like I said, is all van vanilla ice cream. So I'm just writing down some notes here. All right, let's try the one in the middle here. Uh, let's see. Kenneth Rathburn, $2, says, Good luck. Did six bourbon flight recently. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, that could, that could be, yeah. Luke W., this one scares me the most, Then that is the winner. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. It did scare me on the nose, but it wasn't bad on the palate. I still prefer one and two over the number three, though. Let's go to the fourth one in the middle here. How come most of these are giving me, like, a banana note? It's very weird. Banana and corn is what I'm really picking up in some of these. This one's a little bit yeasty. Like I'm getting some yeasty bread notes in here. Uh, let's see. Ten High. Good God. My grandfather used to drink it. Uh, if I remember correctly, it tastes like a cross between linseed oil, corn cobs, and wood alcohol. Don't ask me how I know. Pouring some Woodenville. <laughs> there you go, Mike. Joseph Brazo. If I had to go back to the bottom shelf... I probably just quit drinking bourbon. <laughs> Let me go for a sip of this one. That one just has nothing going on. It's just blah. It's banana, lemon, corn. Again, I'm getting like a little bit of that sour wood note I think I was getting in this one. These two aren't doing too well so far. Eh. Yeah, there's not a lot going on in this fourth glass. This one's really light. Eh. Yeah, not a fan. Uh, Eric Evanson, have you had any Traverse City bourbons arise? Yes, big fan of Traverse City actually. I have the Traverse City, the Barrel Proofs, I think are delicious. Um, I have a regular bourbon and a Barrel Proof from Traverse City. Both solid, uh, solid uh, bottles. Uh, let me get some water here. Whiskey Crusaders, where is Tom Moore? Uh, don't get Tom Moore here. I've only ever seen that in Texas, dude, where, where, uh, when I visited uh, Texas. I, don't, I never see Tom Moore anywhere. But Tom Moore... Kind of falls in line with the uh, with the JTS Brown bottled and bond and the JW Dant bottled and bond. All are it's a solid uh, bottled and bond bourbon. The uh, Tom Moore, it's really good actually. Um, hey, Bourbon Apprentice in the house. What is up? Uh, YL new KC9 is so good, isn't it? I'm a huge fan, of, guys. If you haven't, if this hasn't hit your area yet, the KC9, uh, the nine year age statement is back. That was what I reviewed last week for my What's on the Shelf Wednesday. I'm telling you, it's like a lower proof Booker's. 
Um, it's got the peanut. It's got a good proof point to it. It's even older than Booker's. <laughs> I mean, it's not as high proof, but it had that flavor profile. Peanut, a um, little bit of fruit. Very, very good stuff. Very happy that the age statements are starting to come back. Excuse me. Whiskey Crusade is fine. I'll get you some. <laughs> Uh, Woodenville earlier, Woodville double oak now, Woodenville is better, oh, Andrew Kelly, Kelly likes Woodenville over the double oaked, interesting, uh, alright, let's go to number, we're on number five here, guys, oh, this one has the best nose of the group so far, this one's very sweet, definitely good balance of oak, there's more pronounced caramel in this glass, which is nice. Mmm. Definitely some baking spices. Getting a hint of uh, cinnamon in here too. A little bit of uh, maple. Man, slight. I don't know if that's if I'm picking up a little bit of a cherry note here too. Easily the most, this one's easily the most um, uh, interesting nose out of all of them I've had so far. Let's go for a sip. Mmm. That one was good. Vanilla, caramel. This one has the most pronounced type uh, of caramel type um, flavor in it. The rest are really light. This one comes in with a nice caramel finish. Uh, it's got a really nice, uh, probably the best viscosity out of all of them too. Let's go for another sip of this one. Mmm. Yeah. Probably the most balanced. Out of all of them, it's not just, you know, sweet and then nothing. This one actually provides a little bit of a finish, a little bit of a spice here. Vanilla, caramels, a little bit of sweetness. Um, yeah, that one might be the leader in the clubhouse so far. Number, uh, number one, two, three, four, number five. T-Wizard saying 90 proof. You calling out that that might be the Ezra Brooks? It could be. Could be. It might be the darkest out of all of them, actually, when I look at it. That could be the Ezra. All right, let's go to number six here. Holy vanilla ice cream cake. This is like vanilla frosting in a glass. Ooh. A lot of alcohol, though, mixed in there. This one was very promising at first. This was like pure opening up a fresh can of like Pillsbury vanilla frosting. Yeah, that's right, Pillsbury. Or Betty Crocker. Betty Cocker. <laughs> uh, hey, Brian Mackey's here. Uh, Brian Mackey, we are doing a, a bottom shelf, uh, bottom shelf uh, bourbon tasting. Seven bottom shelfers, including Ancient Age, 10 High, Ezra Brooks, Benchmark, to see which one is my favorite bottom shelfer. Yeah, this is an absolute vanilla frosting. There's there's no real other. Um, I can't grab too many notes off of it. The the vanilla frosting note is just punches you in the face on this one. It's so sweet. Let's go for a sip of this one. Oh, geez. That one is an absolute vanilla bomb. Holy crap. I mean, is any of this stuff like have added vanilla in it? It literally tastes like someone dumped a vial of uh, vanilla extract in that one. That one's crazy. Coming off the others. Oof. Absolute vanilla bomb on that one. I mean, there's... I 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I would agree. Some of you in the chat are saying it could be the benchmark. I would agree that way with, you know, knowing that sweet Buffalo Trace, uh, you know, that sweet Buffalo Trace mash bill. All right, last one. Oh, this one is this one has some nice spice to it. Getting nutmeg and cinnamon on the nose on this one. Not overly sweet though. Getting kind of like a wet oak type nose to it. Like uh like 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 moss, like grassy. It it tastes grassy and green on this one. Not the best nose. It's like fresh cut grass. Um but mixed with like baking spices, if that makes sense. A little bit strange on this one. Yeah, not crazy about that one. Let's go for a sip. Oh, that was way better on the palate though. I didn't get too many of the grassy notes on the palate. There's a nice little, um, hmm, it's a nice little spice to that one. Mm. That one's probably got the spiciest finish out of all of them. It's got this lingering pepperiness to it. It's actually really nice. Um, the nose on that one, though, is very funky. Not crazy on the nose, but the palate is actually pretty good. So I'm just going to write down funky grassy. All right, I'm going to sip through these one more time real quick, rank them, and then we'll find out what's my favorite here. Then I'll hang out. We're going to be giving away that bottle of Woodenville. So, uh, all right, I'm going to go reverse order now and see if anything changes for me. So first for this one, yeah, I don't need a lot of water. That's very true, Austin. So again, this one has kind of a funky nose, but the palate makes up for it a little bit. I do like the spice on that one. So I'm going to call that one spicy finish. This one is just the when, you know, I think somebody opened the cupboard and spilled some vanilla extract in it. Dear Lord. I mean, I kind of like it. I mean, I am a fan of vanilla as... You know, most bourbon drinkers would be a fan of that type of uh, that type of flavor, and that has it in spades. It's crazy. All right, let's go to the uh, number five. Um, this one I said had the me had the best balance to it. Yeah, I would still maintain that has the best balance. Um, sweetness, oak, baking spices. That one could be the leader in the clubhouse right now. Um, let's go to number four here. What did I write down there? Yeah, this one was like the sour, like sour bread type one. Very sour on the palate. Not crazy about that one. Uh, three. Yeah, three, three's kind of getting lost in the shuffle out of all of them. It's okay. It's not really... It's just okay. I mean, that would be like a, a solid mixer. Keith Schmidt says, as a fellow New Yorker, five dollars for pronouncing water the correct way. <laughs> water. 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 No, I'm sticking to it. It's water. This was the banana bomb that I actually really like. Oh, now coming off the rest, it wasn't as interesting as the first time. So, I don't know. It's not bad. It's not great. It's not bad either. 
Uh, and number one was the vanilla ice cream, but it's still not as vanilla as that one. Yeah. Number one's pretty good. All right. Let's start ranking these. I think I have a clear-cut um, winner here as far as what I like the best. And that would be number five. So number five for me um, is definitely first place here. Uh, let me put that here. Um, next up, I don't know. I'm probably going to go with the Vanilla Bomb. This one's pretty delicious. Yeah. I like that one. That one's going second. Um, yeah, these are all kind of hanging around the kind of the back end. I think third will be the one with a little bit of a spicy finish. I definitely like that one. Um, I like the, uh, the spicy kick it had good balance, not overly, you know, super, um, sweet or anything, but it had a little bit of a funky nose to it, but I did like it on the palate. Spencer Mav, that still wasn't normal. Good try, though. <laughs> I guess. Hey, Bald and Bond said, in order to make good uh, coffee from the coffee store, you need some good water. Exactly. See? Bald and Bond is speaking my language. All right, now to try to rank these guys. I think that one's going to be last. That one's just, yeah, I don't like that one. I'm going to say that one for last. Uh, so these three. Eh. Yeah, these one. I'm going to put that one second to last. I'm going to put this one fourth, the vanilla one here, fifth. And then these two will be last. All right, here's my lineup, guys. Didn't take too long. There's only a very couple that stood out. But for the most part, a lot of them tasted kind of similar. You had the banana note kind of throughout all of them. All right, guys, are ready for the reveal? Let's find out what the hell is in these glasses. Here's my key. Let's open it up here. All right. So let's see, we have Old Crow, Ancient Age, The Benchmark, uh, Heaven Hill. Um, oh, that one was the, okay, I got it, I didn't write down. So that one had to be the 10 high, because that was the last one. All right. All right, let's find out what last place was. ADHD Whiskey, in an imaginary world where these are the best bourbons on the planet, are you still a bourbon lover? <laughs> you know what, I, you know, I could appreciate... A couple of these, I think. A couple of these kind of get you into the bourbon, uh, into the bourbon area. Some of these I probably wouldn't drink again, uh, but uh, these top two are not bad. I said that this one could be like an ice, like you could put this in some sweet tea, that vanilla bomb, um, or was it the third place one? The first place definitely easily had the best balance to it, so. Uh, let's see what it was in last place. Last place for me was B, which was, <laughs> holy shit, Ancient Age. Ancient Age came in last for me. That's not surprising to me because the last time I had Ancient Age, I thought it was shit. Um, I did not like it. I liked the 10 star way better, but uh, that one just didn't do it for me. Wow. Um, all right, let's go to the second one, which is A. So second to last was Old Crow. Old Crow coming in second to last place. Not surprising either. Uh, I've had, I don't think, I, I think I said I didn't have this before, but I did, yeah, that one, that one was like the, um, like the sour lemon one. That was kind of gross. Oof, Buffalo Trace. <laughs> Bourbon Apprentice, does Jephthah best any of them? Um, no. No, I wouldn't. You know why? Because these have like a sweetness to it. Yeah, it's grainy. They're young. There's some sweetness there. But none of them taste like your grandmother's basement. And that's all you can ask for in a bourbon. Um, okay, I'm getting acid reflux watching this. Uh, all right, let's go to, let's see. This is uh, fifth place. 
This is C. Oh, that's interesting. C was the benchmark eight. Holy crap. Wow, both um, both Buffalo Traces have been eliminated or have been already called out, I should say. Uh, that means we got four left, guys. This Bourbon Supreme one, if that Vanilla Bomb was the Bourbon Supreme, I'm going to fucking go crazy here. Oh, my God. All right. How many of these whiskeys, uh, Eric Evanson, well, I was wrong, but I wonder if that plastic bottle didn't help. <laughs> Uh, whiskey, Old Crow Reserve is good. Um, kind of surprised Agent Ancient Age uh, took the bottom spot. I'm surprised too, actually. Let's go to fourth place. Uh, wait, which one is this one? All right, so fourth place was the 10 high. So that's this one. Um, again, I've never had this before. Not terrible. Um, not too bad. Pretty decent. So that leaves us in the top three. We have Bourbon Supreme, Ezra Brooks, and the Heaven Hill Quality House. Um, all right, let's go to third place here. Um, okay, let's go here. That's D. So D was the Heaven Hill. D is Heaven Hill. That's third place, which means it's coming down to... I have a feeling that Vanilla Bomb is the Bourbon Supreme. It's got to be. That's crazy. That shit tastes like... That is... Um, let's see. That is letter... Where's that one? Yep. Bourbon Supreme, which means number one bottom shelf for me was Ezra Brooks. Look at that. I guess the proof helped. Who knew? 90 proofer. The only 90 proof on the bottom shelf. It was Ezra Brooks that came out on top. But Bourbon Supreme ended up being the freaking crazy vanilla bomb. That's nuts. I mean, is there added shit in this one? It says on the back, it's 51% whiskey and 49% neutral spirits. <laughs> I'm telling you, somebody dumped some, some, grandma's, uh, some of grandma's freaking... Um, Vanilla extract in that one. I'm telling you. But uh, Ezra Brooks comes out with the number one. That's crazy. You shouldn't be drinking these out of Glens. They deserve to be drunk straight out of paper bags. Yeah, pretty much. This is hilarious. <laughs> Ezra Brooks is about to be sold out thanks to this video. I do like Ezra Bro uh, Whiskey Crusaders. Says, I do like Ezra Brooks. It's good stuff. I'm telling you, out of all these, it was the most balanced. And it was about 12 bucks. I mean, shit. Not bad. This was pretty hilarious, though. I mean, when you put all these in a blind, I mean, they're all... A couple of these were very similar. Um, let me see what the... What the hell was the banana one? The banana cream one, I think I had pretty high. Oh, man. That's crazy. Uh, so guys, hey, if you're looking for a cheap bourbon, Ezra Brooks, there it is, Ezra Brooks for the win, and look, in this shit, 10 high coming in, beating out these, I mean, what the hell, oh, 10 high is actually from Sazerac as well, um, 10 high is a, Sa is a Sazerac product, Sour Mash, America's native spirit, look at that, look at that American Eagle on the front. ADHD whiskey, look at that, America, look at that eagle, baby. 10 high coming in. Beating out Benchmark and Ancient Age and Old Crow. Holy shit. Heaven Hill did, this one did pretty good, better than I thought. The Bourbon Supreme was kind of my surprise. But Ezra Brooks, you know, that, that might have been my favorite going in and it actually did really well. All right, so you know what I'm going to do, because I always do it. I'm going to blend all of them together. Uh, we're going to let it sit. I'm going to do the giveaway, and then we will uh, call it a night. Actually, might be uh, maybe I'll crack open the wee beastie while, this, uh, while these blend together a little bit. Let's see if this makes anything decent. I have a feeling this is going to be terrible, but we'll see. Oh, fill in the glen. One more. Oh, it just made it. <laughs> there it is 
The cheapest blend in whiskey tube, right there. There you go, that's what I just did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, EW bottled and bond. Um, what proof is 10 high? So 10 high is 80 proof. It's an 80 proofer. Um, I actually, I was told at the, at the store today that 10 high is most of the, the bars here in Columbus. This is their, this is their mixing bourbon. This is what they use to mix most of their bourbons is the, the 10 high, uh, for, uh, for cocktails. Um, unless obviously you specify a specific bourbon you want, but if there's nothing you're going to specify, they're using this. So, um, it actually held up in the blind tasting was very surprised by that one. Obviously the bourbon supreme. Just crazy weird. Um, but, all right, we're going to let that sit. Uh, here we go. Clifton McDaniel, how many Super Chats to get you to drink that? <laughs> oh, I'm going to drink it. No Super Chats needed. I'm going to drink it. Um, all right, guys. Uh, so, Trev, um, if, let's see, we did that on Cheap Whiskey Night. Could not finish it. I dumped it into the Infinity Bottle. <laughs> Dude, if you couldn't finish it, then why would you even put in the Infinity Bottle? It's, that can't be good. Um, Ten High is great. Well bourbon. Yeah, that's basically what they use it for. So it actually wasn't bad on the palate. Um, but yeah, the Ezra Brooks, I think that 90 proof. For $12, that is not a bad bourbon at all. Um, I'm going to have to do that on a What's on the Shelf Wednesday very soon. That Ezra Brooks. I think, uh, I think that's worth a review on that one. Shocked Benchmark got fifth. Yeah, I reviewed Benchmark not long ago. I liked it. Um, but coming against the other ones, I mean, I don't know. But, you know, when you're dealing with, like, these cheap bourbons, they all, I'm telling you, the first, like, four all tasted very similar. They all kind of blended together. Um, it was the ones that kind of stood out, and it was easy to see why the Ezra Brooks stood out, being 90 proof. Um, definitely stood out among the other ones. The Heaven Hill... Definitely had a little bit of a nuttiness to it uh, still. Uh, it's just always there, which is crazy. And the Bourbon Supreme is just like, uh, this one, this was the shocker for me. I mean, it's not bad. Not bad at all. All right, Chris, can you go through the final order again? All right, so final order was... Oh shit, I moved all the glasses. So last place was um, last place was Ancient Age. Uh, next to last, I believe, was Old Crow. Um, then it was Benchmark 8. Um, then it was 10 High. Then it was Heaven Hill. Or was it Bourbon Supreme and then Heaven Hill? I think it was Bourbon Supreme second and then Ezra Brooks first. So that was the lineup here. Which is crazy. But interesting, when you have them all back to back, I mean, these younger, cheaper bourbons, they're hard to pick out when you do them next to each other. I mean, again, if these were in a different order, like I always say, you know, it could have been different. One bourbon does affect another one as you go through a blind tasting. But um, I think they were all really, you know, none of them were terrible. And I think that's the surprising thing for me. The only one that I really, you know, this, the ancient age just was a little bit sour for me. Uh, and so was the old crow. It just had like a youthful sourness that I didn't like. Um, but the benchmark bourbon Supreme 10 high heaven Hill and the Ezra were all just solid pours. You know, they're, they're not, obviously they're not going to blow you away at any point. Great for mixing. Uh, great for, you know, drop a cube of ice in it, drink it all day while you're barbecuing. Why not? Um, all right. We'll not run out to buy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the reviews. Hey, you're, you're welcome. How does that HH compare to the HHBB? It's not even close, Rebecca. That Heaven Hill, this bottle is not even close to the Heaven Hill bottled and bond original, uh, that, that original bottle. Not even close. Not even close. Uh, can Ezra stand up to the things on the shelf a level up? Uh, I think it could, actually. It's pretty, um, you know, like I said, it's being 90 proof and, you know, I I would like to put this up against the Beam White Label and see which one I like better. Just to get a, 
you know, get a uh, kind of an indication of what I would go for. Because the Beam white label, again, it's cheap. It's not terrible. It's not great either. But I would like to see out of the two which one I would like. Um, all right. So we got James E says Ancient Age 10. Triple A is where it's at. Absolutely. I like this Ancient Age right here. Oh, I got the 10 star. I got a big jug of this. I like this stuff. Um, this is delicious stuff to me. I, I For the price... Again, it doesn't blow you away, but I think for what it gives you, it's definitely worth it. Um, love the 10 star. Great bourbon. Um, Keith Smith, are any of these blind better than the EC18? Yeah, no. The EC18 blows all the way. Even, even, the, even the EC18 that I wasn't crazy about still blows these out of the water. But um, uh, How close is HH Ball and Bond to EW Ball and Bond? Again, not even close. This is way weaker. It's still sweet. You still get the nuttiness, but it doesn't have that flavor punch like the Ball and Bonds do. Um, Ball and Bonds said, I've definitely had some $40 straight trash. I mean, yeah, I think we've, we've all had. So that's a lot of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, this is a big ass. Uh, this is a big daddy leader. The 1.75. Um, I use this to sip on every now and again. I also use it for mixing. It's a... Uh, if this is the Mashville 2 from Buffalo Trace. It's got the high rye, uh, so it's got a little bit of a bite to it. Stands up great in cocktails. You know, I'd rather have it in a cocktail than drink it, you know, neat most of the time, but it's not it's not terrible. Um, yeah, I think Fighting Cock might be one of the best budget bourbons out there, too. Um, Fighting Cock is definitely really good. And even Evan Williams, even Evan Williams Black Label is a great budget bourbon, too. But Evan Williams, again, is a step above. It's not on the bottom bottom. So that's why that wasn't included in here. But I did like the Evan Williams as well. Evan Williams 1783 is on the bottom bottom shelf. Uh, but I really like that stuff. I think for that thing is like 12, 13 bucks. That might be better than all of these. Um, so, uh, all right. Let's get, uh, so, hmm. I think it's around 15, not the 80 proof HH bottle and bond versus, oh, oh HH bottle and bond versus EW bottle and bond. Oh, okay. Um, I would probably, they're both really close. I think EW bottle and bond is the closest you're going to get to the, um, to that, to the, whatchamacallit bottle and bond, to the Heaven Hill. Uh, unless you get the Virgil, uh, the Virgil, uh, I'm sorry, the Virgin Bourbon. Uh, let me grab that stuff. Oh, shit. What did I knock over? Nothing. Let me grab that bottle, show you guys real quick. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this one. Uh, this is the Virgin Bourbon. This uh, only available, unfortunately, though, in I think it's what, Alabama and um, I'm not sure the other states where it's, uh, but this. This supposedly is old Heaven Hill bottled and bond bottles um, that they got and they bottle it. And this is probably the closest, closest thing I've ever had to the Heaven Hill old style bottled and bond bourbon. So this is 101 proof, charcoal filtered. It's bottled in Kentucky by Metal Lawn Distilling, but it's Heaven Hill juice. This is the closest thing I've had to uh, that, that old stuff. So if you know anyone in Alabama that can get this, definitely give it a go. <laughs> uh, oh, Bourbon Apprentice says it's in North Carolina. Oh, and Virginia also has it. Okay, so yeah, so it's around. If any of you guys see this, this is the closest thing I've ever had to the old uh, Heaven Hill Ball and Bond. This is really good stuff. I think it's slightly fruitier than that than the old than the old one, but it's really good. Um, all right, Trev Wilson, send me the last, uh, send me the last, uh, the final, um, list and we'll give away our bottle tonight. Boom. Uh, Virgin was a killer seven year, now NAS, sold in Bama. Yes. Thoughts on McKenna 10 bottle and bond. I love McKenna 10. I mean, I just wish you could find it easier, but McKenna 10, the last couple bottles I bought have been all solid. 
Um, Karen B. Ford, I just bought a case of Virgin Burn. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, Karen actually was, was kind enough to send me that bottle. Um, she bought a case of it. She liked it so much. All right, he said sent. Perfect. All right, let me get on the, uh, let me grab to my email real quick, guys, and I will. Um, all right, perfect. Where's Trev's email? And there it is, giveaway names. All right. So I'm going to grab these names here, guys, real quick, and then drop it into the randomizer. I'll see how many names we got here, guys. All right. Go to random. All right, drop these in and randomize. All right, so we have 45 entries. All right, 45 entries, guys. Let's go to, let's see here. Rebecca Page, if you need McKenna, let me know. Uh, I think I'm good on McKenna right now. I did port finish uh, two bottles I had though. <laughs> I only have one regular bottle left. Um, all right. So let's see here. 45. I'm not going to read off all the names, man. That's crazy. <laughs> but we got 45 entries. So let's go to... Uh, oh. I think I'm good on McKenna right now. That's me. All right, here we go. Pick a number between 1 and 45. Here it comes. 12. 12. So let's see who number 12 is. 12 is Ben Laguerre. Ben Laguerre. You are the winner. Let me take a quick photo of that so you guys can see. Ben Laguerre is the winner. Let's go to, uh, where, are you, where are you guys here? Here we go. So there is number 12. You can see Ben Laguerre's name right there, number 12. Congratulations, Ben. You win the Woodenville uh, bourbon. Uh, contact me here at themastandrum at gmail.com, uh, and I will get you your bottle. So congrats, man. Congrats to Ben, everybody. Congratulate, Ben. Good job, buddy. Uh, Sean Park says, I'm excited for Weller Single Barrel. I mean, yeah, if you could find it. So so the deal with um, Weller Single Barrels, they're releasing it one time annually. Uh, apparently, it's going to be selected by, um, by Harlan Wheatley and a couple of other the tasters there uh, to ensure that it's going to be a good release. I have a feeling it's going to be pretty good, but unfortunately, like most of the Weller Special Releases, we're just not, most of us won't see it ever. Unfortunately, it's annual. It's very limited. It's, you know, you could kind of put it in the same category as CYPB, um, uh, Crafty Perfect Batch, the white label one, uh, unfortunately. And, you know, I mean, we'll see what happens. Congrats, Ben. All right. Let me try this one uh, before we sign off here. I mean, it doesn't smell terrible. <laughs> ah, nah. <laughs> Not good, guys. Oh, God, no. Oh, that's awful. Man, those things were better singular than they are together. No. Man, that's awful. It's like sour, uh, it's, it's like sour mossy wood with like, it's almost like, it, it almost like tastes like stale corn. That's terrible. That's going to be going right in the drain. No infinity bottle for that. Nope. Oh, it's terrible. <laughs> uh, oh, Eric Evans says, we beastie. Chug it, chug it. I love that bottle. So classy. The facial expression said a thousand expletives. Yeah, dude. It is not good. I'm not chugging that, dude. 
Someone will have to give me a hundred bucks to chug that. I'm not chugging that shit. Hell no. All right. Um, all right. You know what? Let's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to sign off in about two seconds here, but I will uh, do my final pour of the wee beastie. I might as well get a good, uh, good indication of this one. I got one more clean glass left right over here. Let's pour some wee beastie. Give a quick, uh, give a quick review as we sign off here. Thank you so much for hanging out tonight, guys. This was awesome. Thanks for the support. Congrats to Ben. Uh, thanks for all the super chats, the support. Uh, it's been great. So let's go into the wee beast, uh, wee beast cereal here. Wee, 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 wee Woo. Yeah, that definitely smells like Ardbeg. Um, so guys, for the Wee BC, it's uh, five years old only. Um, it's non-chill filtered, and it comes in at 47.4% ABV. So it's definitely got some punch to it. Here's the color. It's very, very light for an Ardbeg. Ardbeg is normally pretty light, but this is really light. So it's definitely a young peated, uh, young peated whiskey here. Holy Lord. There is a ton of smoke coming out here. But again, you get, this is like bacon. It's just pure bacon and smoke I'm getting here on the glass. Definitely some punchy peat here. Whew. Still getting some sweetness though. Getting like that grilled peach and apricot note. Let's go for a sip, guys. Oh my gosh. That's like getting kicked in the face by a, by a, um, a matchbook. <laughs> that is smoky. Man, that, like that creosote like type scent in the, almost like when you lay down new blacktop and you get that smoky like that. Oh my gosh. That is intense. That is an intense, intense, uh, art bag. I kind of like it, but. That is not for the faint of heart. If you if you like to drink higher aged um, uh, scotches that have a little bit more of a rounded flavor profile in order to soften the peat a little bit, that is not that what's in this bottle. This is kick you in the nuts, balls out, smoke, peat, all of it. One last sip. Wow. Mmm, bacon. Little, it's sweetening up a little bit. Like all art bags, I think this is going to sweeten up a little bit as it gets past the shoulder. But that neck pour was just a smoke bomb. So, um, I have a feeling I'm going to like this once it opens up a little bit. But uh, with that, guys, I want to say thank you so much for uh, hanging out tonight. This was a blast. Um, I have a very, 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 very special guest that I'm working on coming on the channel very soon. I don't want to say too much in case it falls through. But it's going to be epic. So um, I am something I'm working on. Um, if you guys enjoyed Patrick Heiss last week, you're going to very much enjoy this next guest that I'm working on getting on uh, on the channel the next couple weeks. So um, be on the lookout for that. And cheers to you all. Stay safe. Um, have a great, safe Memorial Day coming up. Cheers uh, to all the veterans, all the people serving. Really appreciate you uh, and, and what you do in protecting our freedoms. Um, I can't say enough about, uh, about Memorial Day, what it means to me, what it means to everyone out there. Uh, cheers to all you. Have, you know, enjoy, your, uh, enjoy your weekend. And as I always say, it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share it with. Cheers, and I'll see you next week on the Mash and Drum. Take care, guys.